Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have three to the power of square root of three and four to the power of square root of two. And we're gonna find out which number is larger. I'm also going to show you a result from Wolfram Alpha, where you kind of get to see the magnitude and the comparison. Okay, so how do we compare these numbers? First of all, these numbers are irrational. Why? Because square root of 3 is irrational, and then we raise 3, which is an integer to an irrational power, and you get an irrational number. Is it always like that? What about an irrational base to an other irrational, like pi to the power e or e to the power of pi? So those are really good questions, but we're not going to get into those. We're going to keep it simple. How do you compare something irrational like these numbers? So we're going to try to get out of that irrationality as much as possible. That's going to be our goal, but we're always going to stick to some ir irrational because there's no way to get rid of these completely. If you are comparing square root of 3 and square root of 2, obviously that would be fairly straightforward, but let's say you are comparing square root of 3 plus square root of 2 and 1 plus square root of 5. I don't know, something like that. You could square both sides and then kind of look at, so again, make it rational, as rational as possible. That's the whole idea. Now, since we don't know which one is larger, we can't just, I mean, we can, but I don't like using that method. Some people just assume that, oh, suppose this number is greater than the other one, and they go all the way to the end and without violating any of the domains. And if they get that to be true at the end, then of course their initial assumption was also true, okay? I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do it slightly differently. So here is how we start. First of all, I want you to notice that the exponents are irrationals. So let's go ahead and get rid of one of them. How can we do that? Well, just pick one. For example, uh, you can say, okay, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this number. You can go ahead and take this number. What would you, okay, that's another good question. We have an irrational number to an irrational power, but the result is rational. Here's the answer. You raise it to the power root 3, root 3 times root 3 becomes a 3. This becomes 3 to the third power, which is 27. You see, whenever they ask you a question, I believe this came up on one of the classes that I was taking, like a proof class a while ago. So when a and b are irrational, can a to the power b irrational? Absolutely. This is an example, and there are many more examples. So what does that mean, though? You can't just raise one of these to the power root 3. You must do it on both. So when you do it on the right-hand side, I mean, this side is right-hand side, right? Then you get the following. Now you have 27 and 4 to the power root 6. So if there's a way to be able to compare these two numbers, then you could go ahead and proceed with that. But again, you're not going to be able to do it because what is 4 to the power root 6? Or what is 4 to the power root 2? How do you raise an integer to an irrational power? That's a good question, right? We know it's irrational, but how do you do that? Well, you can approximate root 2. And using rationals, there is definitely something called continued fractions, but you can definitely approximate. You probably know that root 2 is about 1.4, and it's greater than 1.4, so you can safely say that, hey, this is greater than 4 to the power 1.4, which is 4 to the power 7 over 5. This might be a little helpful, but again, we need to get rid of one of the radicals in the exponent so that things become easier. So could we do that here? For example, root 6, what is the close to, right? We know that 6 is less than 6.25, and if you square root both sides, you're going to realize, okay, square root of 6 is the square root of 6.25. You know that 25 squared, that's 2.5. And that's 5 halves, right? So can that help us? Absolutely. That's actually the trick that we're going to use. But how do we use it? I'll show you. Not this way, it's the other way around. Does it work this way? I don't know, I haven't tried it, but I'm going to show you the following. So we got a really nice comparison, an irrational compared to a rational. Nice, let's rewrite it, because it's really cool. Square root of 6 is less than, wait a minute, did I say less than? Hmm, 2.5, yes. It is less than that because 6.25 is, okay. I'm confusing myself, sorry about that. So this is true. And how am I gonna proceed with that? I'm gonna go ahead and use three as a base and then write it like this. Since 
this number is less than that number. When I do three to the power of those numbers, the inequality is going to be retained because the base is greater than one. Make sense? If the base is less than one between zero and one, that's a very different story. You got to be very careful. But this gives us something good. You know what that tells me? It tells me that, okay, I should play with this. So we have three to the power root three. If you raise it to the power root two, it's going to be three to the power root six. That's the number I'm going to use here later on though. We're not there yet. Okay. So in this, you know what? I don't like fractions. Do you like fractions? Well, I kind of like them, but I want to get rid of the two. So let's raise both sides to the second power, which is squaring both sides. In other words, and then we can kind of cancel out the two here. This gives us three to the power two root six is less than three to the power five, which is 243. This is the most critical part. Why did I uh, use, or why did I raise both sides to the second power? Because I wanted to get rid of the rational, or what is it called? Fractional exponent. I don't like three to the power five halves, even though it's the square root of 243, I don't want to have a square root. I want to have an integer. And I got it. Great. So, but how do we transition from this to the other number? Remember, the base for the other number is four. So we kind of got this part. Let's go ahead and compare it to a power of four, which indeed is a power of two, right? So here's what we're going to do. Think about powers of two. Which one is close to 243? If you said 256, you got it. And it's greater. So 256 is greater than 243. And 244. 56 happens to be 16 squared. Nice. What is that supposed to mean? It just means that we have this equation, which is 3 to the power 2 root 6 is less than, let me rewrite, two, 3 to the power 2 root 6 is less than 16 squared. Okay, well, maybe uh, I squared both sides, but then I'm going to square both sides, square root both sides. In other words, we're going to raise both sides to power one half. We're going back and forth to make it a little easier on ourselves. I don't know if it's easier, but I think so. So from here, we get three to the power root six is less than 16. Great. That was the goal. I was trying to compare a very irrational number to an integer, and I got it. Now, how am I going to proceed? Well, here's the interesting part. 16 is a power of 4. By the way, I said it's a power of 2, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to use 4 anyways. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as 3 to the power root... What was the number? Okay, let me go back. 3 to the power root 3. Yes, I just forgot it. 3 to the power root 3 to the power root 2. And this one, I want to have an... Uh, this is 4 squared, right? But I want to write it as follows. 4 to the power root 2 to the power root 2. Make sense? And we know that this is the inequality, right? Because that's 4 to the second power is 16. Great. So this is 16. So now what do we have? We have square root of 2. Let's raise both sides to the power 1 over root 2. That gives us 3 to the power root 2 is less than 4 to the power root 2. So the winner is 4 to the power root 2. That's the larger number. Yay! Let's go ahead and check some results from move from alpha and we'll conclude with that. Pay attention to the values as we go over them. Now, Wolfram Alpha also verifies, good job. Wolfram Alpha also verifies that this number is larger, 7.1-ish, 6.7-ish. Now, another way to look uh, at the comparison is to look at the ratio, which is about 1.059, which is about 1.06, but it's greater than 1, so the numerator is larger. Make sense? And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.